prayer in your cabin. Read those books in a blink. Oh yeah. Grab yourself a hot drink because you're watching how to train your Gavin. Yep, that's me. Being in my pyjamas is what you're gonna have to expect on this channel for the next month. Hey guys, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today I am going through a lot of books. Uh, what I want to do today is to show you all of the physical arcs and proofs that I have in my collection. So ARCs are advanced reading copies that publishers send me, usually for review. Actually always for review, but I don't always get to them. I've worked up quite a collection with all of these ARCs and proofs to be fair. I do absolutely love it when a publisher reaches out and asks me if I want a proof of something, because usually I'm like, <laughs> yes please. Some of these are unsolicited, but most of them are books that I really wanted to read. A lot of these I have read. I haven't just, you know, requested proofs of things and just not read them. So some of these I also have the final edition of, you know, the published edition of. I like to support my authors, so, you know, when I get a proof copy and I read it and I'm like, yay, I got this for free, I feel really bad. <laughs> I feel really bad about not, you know, giving some kind of financial support <laughs> to an author, especially if it's a book that I loved. So a lot of these books, especially the middle grade books, I have the final copy for. I mean, say that is mostly the middle grade books, but I do have a lot of YA, I have a lot of adult books in this collection as well. Because there's so many books in this, I don't think I'll be able to explain what all of them are about. That's just not physically possible for me. I'm terrible at summarizing books when I've read them at the best of times. When I haven't read them, I'm even worse. I've got all of the age ranges mixed up together, but I will start off with the books that haven't come out just yet, and I'll go into all of the books that have come out, the books that you can buy now, but I just wanted to show them in this collection video. And I will be going alphabetical order by the author surname. So for the books that are coming out in the future, firstly we have Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. This one is middle grade, it comes out January 19th in America and January 21st in the United Kingdom. So excited for this one, I'm reading it next week. But this one is, uh, it says, seriously don't open this book otherwise bad things will happen. I mean monsters, aliens and evil magicians taking over the world kind of bad. Can you handle that? Yes, read on. No, very sensible. Return this book with the enclosed envelope. It did actually come with an envelope saying, none of your business, don't ask which street, New York, NY54321. One size fits all envelope, property of the Bureau. So really, I, I'm supposed to fit this book in here and send it back, I guess. But I am super excited to read it. This is on my current TBR, so I am going to be reading it very, very soon. And then I have The Ghost Garden by Emma Carroll. This one is by Barrington Stoke, so this means that is, it is a dyslexia-friendly book. And this is middle grade. It was supposed to come out July 2020, but it got pushed back now to January 15th, 2021. And it's set during the summer of 1914, and it is a powerful, evocative, and spine-tingling story of childhood on the brink of war. So looking really good. And Emma Carroll is the queen of historical fiction, of course. Then we have The Elephant by Peter Canavis. This one comes out January 28th, 2021. This one is another middle grade. And this one follows Olive and her father has this big elephant that only she can see following him. And I think the elephant symbolizes depression. And I think it's kind of like a family kind of story. Um, I don't know anything else about it, but I'm really interested in reading it. I love middle grade books that tackle really hard hitting topics like depression and things like that. So looking forward to reading it. Then I have The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. This one comes out on November 12th. 2020. And this is an adult book. Surprise! <laughs> this one just says that Leo was a student at Montfer, an exclusive academy tucked away in the mountains where scholars learn an arcane and mysterious game. Now he returns in disgrace, exiled to his old place of learning. And then Claire is the first woman to serve as Montfer's Magister Ludi. When Leo first sees Claire, he senses a connection with her, though he's sure they have never met before. So uh, Bridget Collins is the author of The Binding, and I really enjoyed The Binding, so I'm looking forward to reading this one. Then I have Me, My Dad, and the End of the Rainbow by Benjamin Dean. This one literally came a couple of days ago and ever since I got it I'm like so excited for it. This it has this sleeve, like this kind of book sleeve, with this gorgeous illustration. The illustration is by uh, Sandhya Prabhat and this honestly is absolutely stunning. This comes out on February 4th 2021 so do get it. It's a middle grade LGBTQ plus novel and I believe it follows a boy whose dad is different. I think his dad is gay. <laughs> right, it doesn't really have a description or anything on this, but I'm pretty sure it follows a young boy whose dad is not straight. <laughs> I think that's what it is. That is the, the best way I can describe this one without an actual synopsis, but I just absolutely love the fact that it's in like a book sleeve uh, with that gorgeous illustration on as well with the author's name on the side. 
the name of the novel on that side and then to reveal this cover as well but yeah that comes out February 4th 2021 we need more middle grades with LGBTQ plus rep next we have Race to the Death by Circus Maxima no Cir <laughs> sorry this is Circus Maximus Race to the Death by Annalise Gray uh, this also came not too long ago I had no idea it was coming uh, but it says it's Ben who meets National Velvet in the Ultimate 9 to 12 Adventure Story by debut children's author Annalise Gray. All it says is it comes out March 2021. But yeah, I had no idea this was coming, but it, it looks good. It looks good. Ben Hur. I've never seen Ben Hur. <laughs> so another really anticipated release is The Hatmakers by Tamsin Merchant. This is middle grade. It comes out January 7th, 2021. And this one, I mean, Tamsin Merchant is an actress. She's been in The Tudors. She was in Salem, which I absolutely loved. This is her debut middle grade. It follows Cordelia, who comes from a long line of magical milliners who weave enchantment into every hat and I think there's like some kind of adventure it has a pirate ship on the cover as well so it might have some kind of piratey seafaring adventure in there as well but I've just been really excited for this one it literally just came today so I thought you know what perfect timing I also love that this uh, proof kind of folds out as well next we have the incredible record smashers by Jenny Pearson illustrated by Erica Salkido and this one comes out March 4th 2021 and this is a really hysterical children's novel it follows Lucy who is a fixer of broken things there's one thing she can't fix and that's her unhappy mum so it sounds like it's going to be like a really nice family story with a bit of humor in there and I don't know so it looks really good uh, Jenny's also the author of a book that's coming up later on so I will I will wait then I have The Forest of Moon and Sword by Amy Raphael and this one comes January 7th 2021 as well lots of them coming out in January this one is set during witch trials and the main character's mum gets used to being a witch I think and she ends up having to save her mum so I'm looking forward to reading this I'm reading it this month so hopefully I will have some positive feedback for it then we have The Boy Who Made Everyone Laugh by Helen Rutter this one comes out February 4th 2021 and it says the funniest debut of 2021 I think this is supposed to be a, a comedic middle grade but also rather touching because it says here that uh, it follows Billy and he tells the best jokes in town and when I'm older I want to be a stand-up comedian but there's one problem I have a stammer so I think it's going to explore his stammer along Along with him wanting to be a stand-up comedian and hopefully it'll be both hysterical and touching. Coming out on the 20th of April 2021 is Witches Steeped in Gold by Sian and Smart. I'm really excited to read this one. All Bola says on the back is Order Divides Them, Revenge Unites Them, Trust No Witch. And this is Young Adult. I, I believe it's Young Adult. Might be adult. No, I think it's Young Adult. So this one is about two enemies who are forced to unite to take down an even bigger enemy. And it sounds really, really good. I can't wait to read it. <laughs> I'm going to say this about all of the books that are coming up. I only have one more, actually. Finally, for the books that are upcoming, I have Threadneedle by <laughs> Carrie Thomas. I do love these proofs where it's got, like, a really nice design on the cover, but then they never really have the title or the author name on the cover. But on the cover, it says, Magic is the first sin, it must be bound. And then it has on the side, Threadneedle, Carrie Thomas. And this one is going to be book one in the Language of Magic series coming May 2021. And when I was approached by Harper, they said this is like a gothic book. So I was like, uh, yes, please. So this one follows Anna and her aunt is telling her about how dangerous and how consequential having magic is. I think is consequential a proper word? Oh my god, <laughs> I sounded so smart. She's counting down the days for her magic to be bound, but then she meets two girls, Effie and someone else, <laughs> and they go through London or something and Anna starts to question whether binding her magic is the best thing. So it looks really good and I, again, I love this cover. And I hadn't heard it before Harper sent me a message about it. Okay, so getting on to the books that have come out, Everything is in alphabetical order by author surname, but I want to go through three of, you know, my most precious, most treasured proofs of all time. First, they're all, all of these ones are middle grade, but I promise there are adult and young adult books in the rest of them as well. But the three that I treasure the most are, and you'll probably laugh at this, you guys will already know all this. If you've if you watched my channel for a while, you'll know exactly what these proofs are. But one of them is The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson. This one is a limited hand stamped proof. And it has, you know, the outline of the bear, the moon and the girl, the owl, and all of that. This was all hand stamped. And there were, I think, six different colors and everybody got, well, everybody, and they sent a limited amount out to booksellers. I mean, you'll probably hate me for this. I did get a little bit of coffee 
on the top as well. Honestly, I, I can't believe it myself. But then this is the final copy, The Girl Who Speaks Bear, Sylvia Anderson. So it does have the same kind of cover, but it's like hand stamped. And this is just like all illustrated by Catherine Honester. So very nice. <laughs> I also met Sophia Anderson and she signed this proof copy for me. So it just makes it even extra special. Then I have my A Sprinkle of Sorcery Proof. This one is by Michelle Harrison. This is the second book in the Pinch of Magic series. And this is also a limited hardback proof edition that was only 100 made and it was also sent, signed and personalised for me so for Gavin set sail with the editions Michelle Harrison it's also number 27 of 100 and honestly I feel so honoured and privileged that I got this I was so excited when I found out I was getting this and honestly yep yeah. oh no the set the fireworks off fuck And then the final copy is Sprinkle of Sorcery. I love this book so, so much. So of course I was getting the final copy anyway. But yeah, I loved getting this. It was, oh my God. On the back it has magic like stories. We'll always leave a trace. And then finally of the really prized special ones that I got, Frost Hearted by Jamie Littler. But yeah, it has a cover that comes off to reveal it underneath. So it's like the, the snow seed that's in the story with the monsters under the snow. And then we have the Frost Heart, which is the, the vessel that the main characters travel on. So when you lift it up, you see the, the monsters under the snow, which is very cool. And then Frostheart and all of that. And then I also met Jamie earlier this year before lockdown and all of that. It has two Gavin, Everlasting Thanks, Jamie Littler. So again, another really prized one because it's one of my favourite books of all time. Uh, but also there's the final copy, Frostheart. So if you fancy getting it, I would recommend. <laughs> so the rest of them, I am literally just going to tell you the very briefest of what they are. Alphabetical again by author surname, and it's a mix of middle grade, young adult, and adult. So firstly, I have The Dark Lady by Akala. This one says it's a pickpocket with an exceptional gift, a prisoner of extraordinary value, and often haunted by dreams of the mysterious Dark Lady. And it says here, yeah, this came out in April 2020. I have The Proof of Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This one, I, I was supposed to read this when it, well, before it came out but I kind of, it just slipped through the cracks. I got less and less interested in reading it, but I do still want to read it. It came out in October, 2019. Honestly, I'm terrible. Power, Privilege, Murder, Enter the Dark and Decadent World of the Ninth House, the long-awaited adult novel from the number one bestseller, Leigh Bardugo. I'll, I'll get around to it eventually. <laughs> then we have Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron. This one says, Grandmother said I will be a powerful witch doctor one day, but I cannot wait that long. So this one came out in September 2019. I do have the final copy of it as well. Then I have Wonderscape by Jennifer Bell. This one came out June 2020. It is a middle grade. This one is like Jumanji meets Ready Player One. And I also have the final copy here as well. Then I have The Island by Emma Bennett. This is a young adult. It came out August 2018. Apparently this is a savage take on Lord of the Flies. And then I have Lie With Me by Philippe. Besson, translated by Molly Ringwald. And this one just says it is a timeless love story. I believe it's LGBTQ+, I think. But yeah, this one came out in September 2019 and it's adult. Then I have Romanov by Nadia Brands. Oh, I was supposed to read this as soon as I got it because I was so excited. It uh, came out in, well, it actually came out on my birthday in 2019, but I believe this is a retelling of the Anastasia story. Not gonna lie, the proof feels like it's self-published. And then I have Love is for Losers by Wibke Brueggemann. And this one is, it says, a funny, fast-paced and sex-positive YA novel from a debut author, perfect for fans of sex education with a hint of Louise Renison. Not really into my YA contemporaries, but this one was sent to me from Macmillan and it came out on the 20th of May of this year. Then I have another twist in the tale by Catherine Bruton, and this one is a middle grade. It's an Oliver Twist kind of sequel, an unofficial Oliver Twist sequel, which follows Oliver Twist's sister. This one has just come out, but I haven't managed to go and pick it up yet. It is one that I really enjoyed, so I definitely do want to get the final copy so I can support the author. Next, I have The Girl with the Shark's Teeth by Kerry Burnell. This one is a middle grade, and this one came out in January 2019, and this one, it follows a girl who is like drawn to the water so <laughs> it's all I pretty much know sorry <laughs> then I have rules for being a girl by Candice Bushnell and Katie Cotugno and this one just says it's a call to arms novel for young adults addressing the May 2 generation the struggles of social media and what it means to be a girl so it's also from the author of Sex in the City I think that's probably why I asked for it because I love Sex and the City so much. So yeah, I think it'll be like a really good, important read, but I've heard nobody talk about it. So I wonder if maybe it's been pushed back. 
but it was supposed to come out in April. So then I have my proof copy of Orion Lost by Alistair Chisholm. This is a middle grade sci-fi novel that came out earlier this year in January. This is the final copy of it. I loved it so much I did have to pick up the, the final copy of it. But this one follows a group of kids who have to take over a spaceship where all of the adults get put to sleep and they have to navigate uncharted territory. So it's a really good book. <laughs> a recent release is The Nesting by CJ Cook and this one literally has just come out October 2020. So on the cover here it says once upon a time deep in the Norwegian wilderness a girl was living a lie and I love the cover of it. It has that kind of gothic-y <laughs> kind of look to it. Slight camera change because I've forgotten a couple of books, my bad. But I also have The Wizards of Once, Knock Three Times, and The Wizards of Once, Never and Forever by Cressa de Cal, the third and fourth books in the Wizards of Once series. So this one has Willoughby, the third time lucky, and Forever Magic for the final book. This one came out September 2019. This one came out a couple of months ago, September 2020. And I do have the final copies of them as well. There's the um, Knock Three Times and Never and Forever. The first ever American American proof I ever got is Scritch Scratch by Lindsay Curry and this one came out in September. I got this one way back when and I read it, I really enjoyed it and I ended up picking up the final copy when it came out and this one it follows a girl called Claire and she ends up seeing a ghost at the back of a bus and the rest is history. <laughs> it is a ghost story, it's a really good one to read over Halloween or if Halloween's passed which it has, still pick it up, still read it, it's very good. But I am just really proud that this is my first ever American proof. <laughs> then I have The Swords of Silence by by Sean Curry and this one is like an adult fantasy. It was supposed to come out September 2019 but I think it got pushed back but I think it's set in Japan and there is the threat of a massacre looming. So on a betrayal survival that's what it says on the cover. It leaves a lot to your imagination but it does look really good. Okay and as I say I wouldn't have requested it if I didn't think it looked good. I don't know if I requested it or if it was unsolicited. I can't remember now. Just in case you're wondering I do work as a bookseller as well. Um, that's where I get like a lot of proofs sent to me as well. So next we have A Kingdom Tide by Ry Curtis. This one I did actually request. I was really interested in it. It's about like a plane crash and it follows two different people. Yeah, that's all I pretty much know about it now. It's kind of gone out of my head. But I remember seeing some negative reviews about it and it kind of put me off. But I still do want to pick it up. I still want to give it a read. I kind of like the, the cover of it. It looks very very cool. Well, this is the proof cover, so it's not the, the final cover. But I think once I've uh, read a few more positive reviews, I might pick it up. But I don't know, like sometimes reviews really do put me off. I've got so many books to get through and all. <laughs> Next I have The Vanished Bride by Bella Ellis. This is book one in the Bronte Mysteries and it came out in November 2019. This one follows the Bronte sisters and they've become detectives. What more do you need to know? <laughs> then I have Jungle Drop by Abby Elphinstone. This one, it just come out, uh, it's a recent release but it was pushed back from May and this one is the second book in the Unmapped Chronicle series. It's very reflective but it's, I really enjoy the cover of it and I love the, the final copy of it, the final cover of it. It looks beautiful, really great story, very adventurous and yeah, second book in the Unmapped Chronicle series about this incredible kingdom in the sky and each book has followed different people so far so I've been really enjoying it. Then I I have The Umbrella Mouse by Anna Farga, illustrated by Sam Usher, but also Umbrella Mouse to the Rescue, which is a sequel. I do have both uh, final copies as well. It's a really great historical kind of middle grade series that follows a mouse called Pip during World War II. That's the first one. I read it last year. I think it might be signed. Yeah, I've got a signed book plate in it. So yeah, this one came out in May last year, and then I think this one came out in August of this year, I think. Either way, both of them are out now, so if you want to pick them up, up. They're there. <laughs> then I have The Girl Who Stole an Elephant by Nisrana Farouk. This one it came out in January 2020 and I have the final copy here as well. Uh, but this one is about a young girl called Chaya and she is a bit of a thief, a bit of a rebel, but her village is under a really tyrannical rule. She ends up escaping into the jungle. Yeah, picked up the final copy of it as well, which has this nice blue effect on it and this one has a nice pink purple kind of effect on it. Another American proof I got and I only got it a few weeks back and that is The Language of Ghosts by Heather Fawcett and I think this came out in September but she is is the author of Ember and the Ice Dragons. This one I've been told is a bit like Howl's Moving Castle. It does follow a princess who is exiled on this enchanted moving island. So it looks really good. I cannot wait to read it. Then I have The House Without Windows by Barbara Newhall Follett and Jackie Morris. This one I think is like a diary that a young girl wrote back in 1927 because it's written by a child um, who was just 12 years old but then she disappeared. 
Like, this is like a real story and everything, but I think this is a book that a 12 year old girl wrote and then she disappeared. And so I think it got released last year and I got sent a proof copy of that. So I'm really interested in actually reading it and finding out more about the author who, who disappeared. It's quite scary. <laughs> then I have The Lost Ones by Anita Frank. This one came out sometime last year. It is a ghost story, a gothic kind of ghost story. So I just need to read it. <laughs> then I have Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. And this one has on the front there, Simone Garcia Hampton is HIV positive. A very powerful, moving young adult novel about somebody who turns out to be HIV positive in today's society. And the stigmas that, you know, come from from that. So yeah, have the proof of that, has the title on the side. Uh, looks really, really good. Then I have the proof of When Life Gives You Mangoes by Kareen Gettin. I love this book so much. And it kind of borders that middle grade YA kind of kind of book, uh, but I've popped it in the middle grade. But this one does follow Clara who lives in a very small village and she's lost her memory due to a storm that happened the year before and we find out what actually happened and it's, it's just so good. <laughs> this came out at the start of October, I think it was October or September, so this book is out now. And then I have The Shadow Moth which is the first book in the Clock of Stars series by Francesca Gibbons illustrated by Chris Riddell. And this one is also like signed by the author, it came signed which was really cool. But I do have the finished copy as well, absolutely stunning, the illustrations by Chris Fidel are fantastic. It follows a girl who goes through a door into another world. Then I have The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. On the cover here, can you see it all right? It is reflective again. This city is a dark and lawless place and we are its children. And then the title on the side, Welcome to the Court of Miracles, 4th of June 2020. Um, and then we have the final copy here. This is the Illumicrate version of it. This is a, like a lame is kind of retelling. Then I have The Truths and Triumphs of Grace Arthurton by Anstey Harris. Uh, it says she fell out of love and into life. Uh, I don't know when this came out. I don't think I actually, because I'm a bookseller, sometimes it's just like a box of proofs and I just like take what nobody else wants sometimes. And this was in the box for quite some time, but it says for fans of Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine and I liked Eleanor Oliphant when I read it. So yeah, uh, that's why I picked it up, but I know nothing about it. Then I have a proof of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is a teen crime novel and on the back there it has a murdered girl, a closed case, a naked student who won't let it go. So it came out 2nd of May 2019. I do have the finished copy as well. Then I have A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Camara. This is the side of it. It has Jan 20 there, so January 2020, and it opens up. It's like a, a kind of gate opening up kind of thing there, uh, which is really cool. And yeah, it just falls out. And it also came with a Curse Breaker series bookmark, which is pretty cool. Then on the back there, it has Find the Air, Win the Crown, Win the Crown, Save the Kingdom. And then this is the final copy. So not too different. It just doesn't have the kind of gates kind of look to it. <laughs> and I have my proof of The Strange World's Travel Agency by L.D. Lipinski. This one came out April 2020. And this one is about a young girl who finds out that there are suitcases that can take you to different worlds. That is like the Cliff Notes version of it. But this is the final copy of it, The Strange World's Travel Agency. So really good book. I really enjoyed it. Cannot wait for the second book. But yeah, this is out now. Another American proof that was sent to me by the author and that is The Stitches by Laurie and Lawrence. This is the first book in the Fright Watch series. It's going to be like a kind of anthology horror series for children but she sent it with a bookmark she also sent it with harry balls and she also signed it for me as well which is really cool yeah this came out in august and i think october in the uk so i need to pick up a final copy of it and i have another very reflective proof and that is the highland falcon thief by mg leonard and sam sedgman and this is the first book in the adventures on train series and that is a middle grade mystery series i've been really enjoying and then here is the final copy of it as well so Looks really good. <laughs> I also have like a signed book plate in there as well. Then I have my proof copy of Sarah J Mass's Crescent City or House of Earth and Blood. And this one came out back in January. It was either January or February when this came out, which I have the final copy of as well. But yeah, this is like an urban fantasy adult series set in Crescent City, which is filled with different kinds of creatures. Again, very Cliff Notesy kind of version of that, but I feel like a lot of people already know about this book. But yeah, this is the, the proof copy. It has the, the Crescent Moon on there and the gold reflective spine and blue on the back. Then I have The Memory Thief by Lauren Mancy and I do remember I requested this one because I really wanted to read it. It came out in October 2019 um, but again, like, I didn't get a chance to read it. I love the cover of the proof copy so I was like, oh my god, I really want this one. It's, the past is a maze, she is the key and I do really want to read this at some point, I promise. But I don't really know what it's about. <laughs> Apparently memories reign in the city of Craywick. There's a power obsessed ruler of the city. So it's all to do with memory. <laughs> then I have The Ghost Factory by Jenny McCartney. This one came out 
March 2019. And this one says it's a powerful debut set in Belfast and London in the latter years of the 20th century where the Troubles turned North Island into a ghost factory. Again, I think this was just in a box that was neglected for a while and I thought, you know what, I love the look of it, I want to pick it up. Then I have a proof copy of The Land of Raw by Jenny McLachlan. I also have the final copy and I love seeing the kind of the difference there, how it's you know, added the dragon in there and there's a bit more detail. But this is the first book in like a Land of Raw series. Yeah, you open it up and it has like a fold out on there, which is pretty cool. And enter here yeah, for the Land of Raw. And then that also comes out. But same with the final copy of it as well, which uh, has a, again a bit more detail on there and on and on this one. But yeah, it follows two kids who go into the imaginary land of Raw, which they thought they made up as children, but turns out to be a little bit more real than they imagined. And there's just two more stacks of books to go. So then I have Evernight by Ross McKenzie. This one came out in February 2020, uh, but I do have the final copy of it here as well. What it says in the back here is the Evernight is about to return, and the only spell that might stop the darkness and chaos it will bring is lost deep below the great city of King's Haven. Uh, so I really did love the look of it, so I picked up the final copy of it. Uh, yeah, and Ross McKenzie wrote the Nowhere Emporium as well, so quite a well known middle grade author. Then I have a proof of A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol. This is the proof and then the final copy, so not too much of a difference, more colour, more illustration, uh, but it essentially still has our main protagonist on the cover there. This also came out in June as well. This has a neurodivergent main protagonist and she wants uh, justice for the innocent women who lost their lives during the witch trials. It's set in a very small Scottish town called Juniper and it's just a great novel. I absolutely loved it. So yeah, I definitely had to pick up the final copy of it as well. Then I have a proof copy of One of Us is Next by Karen Mc Manus and on the side it just says damn this was so good <laughs> and then it just has a lot of you know praise for one of us is lying on the back you probably wouldn't really be able to know it was one of us is next if you just looked at it but it does have next on it and I do have the final copy of it as well because I read the first like two books by Karen McManus and I like them and I really wanted to continue on with the series but yeah again teen crime who doesn't love a bit of teen crime? Then I have The Beast and the Bethany by Jack Meggett Phillips, illustrated by Isabel Falath. And yeah, this is the final copy with the green sprayed edges. And it does follow a 511 year old called Ebenezer Tweezer, who feeds his beast loads of different things until the beast gets a taste for a little girl. For fans of Lemony Snicket, apparently. But I, what I like about the proof copy is that it's bitten on the bottom there, which I kind of like. Uh, that's pretty cool. And it has like the tear through there, where it says, do not feed the beast. And I have a proof copy of The Night I Met Father Christmas by Ben Biller, another middle grade uh, about meeting Father Christmas. <laughs> I need to get the final copy of this, and yeah, it should be a really great one to read over the Christmas period. This one came out November 2018 as well. Then I have a proof of The Midnight Guardians by Ross Montgomery, a fantastic, fantastic middle grade novel. This is the final copy which the publisher also sent me. Absolutely do love the, the final cover of it. This is set in London, if I was Carl, who's imaginary, friends sort of come to life so we have a badger and a waistcoat, a tiger, a knight in shining armour and it's a really great sort of adventure in a war-torn Britain so I totally recommend reading it it's literally just come out so yeah pick it up <laughs> it was supposed to come out September 2020 but it got pushed back to November um, but yeah I really like the look of this proof as well and I have a proof of Victoria Stitch Bad and Glittering by Harriet Moncaster this came out in September it's about twins one of them is obsessed with power and the other one is all about goodness and all of that so it looks really good. Perfect for fans of Amelia Fang and I love Amelia Fang. Then I have Orphans of the Tide by Sue and Murray. This is a proof and then we have the final copy with this beautiful cover. Uh, if you looked at them on the side you would not tell which one's the proof so that's quite deceiving. So yeah this is set on like the last city of earth and it's like a really fantastic upper middle grade kind of novel and it was quite dark. I absolutely loved it. So yeah, ended up picking up the final copy of it and I would recommend you do the same. Then I have Richard Osman's Thursday Murder Club and this one has been so hyped recently, especially with me working in a bookstore. It's been such a popular best-selling book. Their film rights have just been picked up and I think Steven Spielberg is directing it. That might be why it's so popular at the minute. But yeah, this is not long come out in hardback. I don't typically read thrillers but I'm interested. Then I have The Ten Riddles of Eartha Quicksmith by Loris Owen. This is the proof copy. This is actually not very different to the final copy of it. Wow, I've just turned so orange. 
Wow. This one came out in September. Yeah, this is the final copy. It has orange sprayed edges, which I love. It's set in like this college of strange energies and there's like this hundreds of years old riddle that they have to solve and it's it's great. It is a great, great book. So that is middle grade. <laughs> then I have North Child by Edith Patu and this is a proof copy, but I believe this came out in 2003 under the name of East or West. It had a weird name, but then for some reason they might have rewrote it. I don't know, Edith Patu might have rewrote it or made some adjustments and then it got re-released as North Child, but they did have a proof copy of it. So I have the proof copy. I also picked up the final copy because it's just such a gorgeous cover and I did really enjoy the book. But yeah, this is about a young girl called Rose who makes a pact with a white bear who ends up taking her away to this huge kind of snowy castle. Came out last year, November 2019. Then I have Wakenhurst by Michelle Paver. This is signed by the author. This is like a gothic kind of adult book, mystery and imagination, laced with terror, master work in the modern gothic tradition that ranges from Mary Shelley and Bram Stoker to Neil Gaiman and Sarah Perry. So I don't really know anything about it other than that. <laughs> Apparently came out April 2019. And then I have a proof of The Super Miraculous Journey of Freddie Yates by Jenny Pearson, illustrated by Rob Bedolf. So it has like this bookmark kind of thing that goes in to there. <laughs> so like, I keep it in there um, and you can, you know, push it in and out. But I did mention Jenny Pearson earlier with the incredible record smashers. Uh, so this was her debut, came out earlier this year, and this is the final copy of it with the yellow sweet edges and also signed by the author too. And my proof copy is also signed. This is a hysterical middle grade novel about a boy who wants to find his dad. Uh, so yeah, this is my proof copy. The next one is a very, very brand new release as well, and that is Tinsel, The Girls Who Invented Christmas by Chevelle Pounder and this one is a fantastic Christmassy novel which I really enjoyed. Very imaginative and Christmassy and festive but this is the final copy of it. It's pretty much almost the same cover just with a bit more detail and then you see the town there and the snow and it's in hardback but yeah this one the proof copy has like glitter on it and blue and the silver. It doesn't really come off as well which is great but yeah this one came out in October so Great, great festive read. And then I have a proof of The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. This is a young adult novel. Came out on the 11th of July, 2019. I don't have the final copy of it, but I have read it. And it was kind of like a dystopian kind of Disney princess kind of YA book. Something like that. <laughs> Where Happily Ever After is not just a promise, but a rule. Mm. Then I have My Dog Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. It says on the front there, it's just my luck, he said, that when I finally find a soulmate, she's 15 years old. It deals with a lot of current issues, and it's a book that I really do want to read. I hear it's extremely harrowing, and I think I'm going to end up finding it quite an eye-opening read. So yeah, this is the proof copy of My Dog Vanessa. This apparently came out in January earlier this year. And then I have My Life as a Cat by Carly Sorosiak and this one came out a couple of months ago now but it's about a cat who comes from space to earth and he's called Leonard. Then I have a proof of The Vanishing Trick by Jenny Spangler. On the cover here it says, From a tiny glass box on a shelf, a girl began to appear, pouring out like liquid and becoming solid before Leander's eyes. And then it has the, the title on the side and the author name and the back there. I do have the final copy of it, The Vanishing Trick. And this one came out, I think it was April or May earlier this year. Really, really great middle grade novel. I really enjoyed it. Quite a gothic -y kind of middle grade book and a very nice proof copy as well. Then I have Gargantus by Thomas Taylor. This is the sequel to Malamanda in the Legends of Eriance series. Love the series so much. Uh, this is the final copy of it as well. Love the look of it. I absolutely love the illustrations of the cover. But yeah, this one came out in May. It actually came out on my birthday, which is great. But yeah, it's pretty much a seaside mystery kind of series. Uh, it incorporates some kind of fisherman folk tales in it as well. There's always some kind of beast. I love the series so much. So I was really excited to get the proof copy of the sequel, which I found better than the first one. Then I have On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. This was actually the first ever proof I got as a bookseller or first ever proof ever. I'm so chuffed about it. I do have it signed by Angie Thomas. This is a great novel uh, about an aspiring rap artist and this is the final copy. But I really do like the, the yellow look of the of the proof. Uh, the highly anticipated new novel from the voice of a generation on the come up Angie Thomas. And this one came out in February 2019 so I, I enjoyed it. Then I have a proof of The Unadoptables by Hannah Took and then you open it up and there is a character there. This one came out in July, I would like to say, I think July. There has been some controversy since about the use of the term the unadoptables, as well as the depiction of Egg, who is a 
Asian character in this. So I got all of this before I knew about the controversy, so I'll let you research that yourself if you want to pick this book up. But yeah, this was a proof that I got quite a while back now, and it took me quite a long time to actually read it. Cutting in with another book that I forgot, and that is Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. The reason I forgot about these books was because they're in a different section, so they were with the normal books, um, whereas all the other ones are like in their own kind of section. But I had this with my Nevermore collection. So yeah, Hollow Pox, Hunt for Morrigan Crow, and then it has the side there, and then just Burn Brightly on the back. So nothing too different, a big paperback. And of course I have the final copy here as well. And this is the third book in the Nevermore series. And this has literally just come out a couple of weeks ago. I think it was around about October 15th this came out. And I love the series so, so much. It's so magical, so amazing. So I, I was so happy when I got this proof. Seriously, I was so happy. <laughs> Not long to go now. <laughs> then I have a proof of Dragon Mountain by Katie and Kevin Sang. On the cover here it is where legends are born, where heroes are made, Dragon Mountain. And this came out in September. And the, it's like the dragon scale kind of proof, which I really enjoy. And then on the back there, it has a little bit of a, a synopsis here. So it's the first book of the Dragon Realm series. I read it not too long ago. I have the fi finished copy of it with the dragon scale sprayed edge. And yeah, it follows Billy who gets sent to China in the middle of China to go to this little camp. And then he ends up coming across four legendary dragons along with three new friends. And the rest is the future because if you haven't read it yet you need to read it. <laughs> then I have the proofs of Starfell, Willow Moss and the Lost Day and Starfell, Willow Moss and the Forgotten Tale by Dominique Valente. I love that I have both of them. I, it's like completing the collection kind of thing. The third book comes out in March so I wonder if there is going to be another proof copy of it but like the backs of them are quite similar as well and the fronts of them. I just love how they match. And then I do have a final copy of Starfell the first one with blue spread edges with stars on and then a hardback of the second book. Yeah, this one came out in 2019, 2020 and yeah, it follows a girl who has a, well, she's a witch and she can find lost things and a whole day goes missing in the first book and a whole tale goes missing in the second book. <laughs> so things just keep getting lost. Three books to go, <laughs> three books to go now. So then I have Hello Now by Jenny Valentine. This one, it says it's an unforgettable and totally original love story from award-winning author, Jenny Valentine. This one was published back in April and it's very, very short. I think it is YA, it's either YA or adult. Uh, but I think it's YA. Then I have Shadows of Winter Spell by Amy Wilson. This one came out October 2019. All it says about this one is that Deep in the Forest Magic is waiting. I have seen some reviews of it. I don't know if I want to pick this up anytime soon, but it does look like it'll be a good one to read over the winter period. And then I have Punch in the Air by Ibi Zaboy and Yusef Salam. And this one has not long come out, actually, I think. Yeah, it says this one came out in September 2020. I have seen it in bookstores. And yeah, this is told all in verse, which I've been absolutely loving in my books this year. And and it just says their words were like a scalpel shaping me into the monster they want me to be. So I'm really excited to give this one a read as well. It's not even bonfire night. It's ridiculous. Those were all of the arcs that I own quite a lot, quite a lot. I do, honestly, like, I know you're probably watching this thinking, oh my god, like, what, how ridiculous is that? But like, I do make a huge effort in reading all of the arcs I get sent. I don't ask for all of them, I promise. I ask for ones that I really, really, really want. And recently I have calmed my tits about asking for them as well. So those were all of my arcs and the end of the video. Please don't judge me too much. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video. Bye!